Hi, Matthew Stuckey here from Verity Baptist Church Manila and Verity Baptist Church Pampanga with a quick missionary update. And uh, this past week was one of the best weeks we've had as a church for uh, soul winning. Between our ministries, we had a total of 147 salvations. And uh, we, we had a bit of an outside chance of, um, if not setting our record for a week, um, to, to be within the top couple. This is definitely one of our better results, and it's the best we've had in uh, uh, since definitely before the coronavirus started and everything like that. But on Sunday, we only had, uh, I think, 13 salvations, if I remember correctly. Uh, the rain was going, coming down so hard, and so instead of uh, going out when we normally did, we were singing hymns for a while. We waited till it was only, um, you know, raining a little bit, and then all the soul winners came back and just drenched um, with water. It's just pouring down the rain. It got worse and everything. But we were still able to get some salvations even when it was really raining hard. So the reason why we had so many salvations this week, um, we had a big soul winning marathon on Rizal Day. We had uh, soul winning in four different locations, and, um, you know, it was, it was kind of a crazy day. You know, I went with one of our church members on a so winning adventure to um, you know a family who's uh, there's an overseas Filipino worker who um, he uh, donates to our ministry regularly and we've been wanting to go down there we've been wanting to go there to uh, preach the gospel to his family and have a soul winning event but uh, with the coronavirus it's kind of put everything on hold but we had an opportunity and we went and we talked to his family and uh, we counted uh, some salvations there we talked to a big group we didn't count most of them we only counted four of them but many of them said, yeah, you know, it's it's this makes sense. This is different than what I've heard. So that was exciting. Um, it was nice. And then we came back um, for the second round of the soul winning that we had um, kind of near our church building. Uh, in I guess it was in Quezon City, technically. So it wasn't super near our church building, but it was, you know, in the, I guess, with relatively within the vicinity. And so we had a great result there. Um, you know, we had a lot of soul winners. And then we had soul winning in other locations as well. So all in all, we had more than 90 salvations on um, that day, which was a Wednesday. We moved our Wednesday service back to Thursday, and um, you know we had a church service, and we had fellowship afterwards as it was New Year's Eve. And so things are going really well. Our attendance has been great. We were just re-talking uh, talking yesterday with some of the men about how to uh, restructure our chairs and move stuff around because uh, we've our attendance has been better, and it can be a little bit cramped um, for space. Uh, so we're probably going to be trying to move in the chairs a little bit and, um, you know, that way we can open up some more room. And uh, maybe in the future we'll make plans. We'll start looking for another building, potentially. But uh, we'll see. We're still good for now. It's a good building for us. We like the location. But it is good to have um, our attendance grown quite a bit. On a Thursday, I preached on Hosea chapter 4, The Devastation of Sin. Uh, perhaps the best chapter, the most interesting in Hosea. It really uh, lines itself up for a good sermon. Very interesting chapter, a lot of symbolism and stuff. On Sunday, we continue our series um, on Saturday in Pampanga and Sunday in Manila on uh, fundamental family tips um, for wives. And so you can check that out. It will come up this week. And then on Romans 9a, as I talked about Paul's love for Israel, and I showed the examples with Jacob and Esau and uh Moses and Pharaoh are really representing, you know, nations as opposed to just individuals. Um, people take Romans 9 through 11, both Calvinists and Zionists, dispensationalists, and they just preach all kinds of crazy things. But if you look at it in context, you know, which we did, then that's not really what it's representing. And so um, you can check out that sermon. We're just kind of going verse by verse through Romans. We took a bit of a break. We're back into it. So things are going really well for us. We got a new year. We're hoping things are going to be a little bit less crazy in 2021. But, you know, I'm not really sure. Everything is obviously up in the air. And so overall, um, our church is doing well during this time period, especially given all the circumstances. And, uh, you know, just pray for us that things will be open. And um, the Philippines has been a super strict country with lockdowns. And so just pray for us if you're um, tuned into our ministry from overseas that we will have uh, freedom to preach the gospel. We're looking forward to having parks back open where there's a lot, lot of people gathered because it will really help our salvations quite a bit. And so, um, you know, things have been great. I mean, as a church, between our churches, we had over 4,000 salvations. Um, you know, as a, a church, I believe, I'll get the exact number. Um, I'm, I'm not remembering off the top of my head to uh, give you a, a recount of how many salvations we had. I'll give you like a yearly update. But 
I mean, it was, it's, and we don't have any full-time soul winners here. I mean, it's really just people volunteering their time and doing a great job. So just be in prayer for our church and our members that, get, that they'll be blessed with work and their finances because things are very difficult here right now for a lot of people. And just continue to be in prayer for our church. And anyways, thank you and God bless.